Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 36 of Lab Padres, SpaceX, and Starbase Weekly Updates. I'd like to thank our very own Thomas for filling in, as I'm going to be out of pocket for the next couple of weeks. So without further ado, let's dig in. Thank you, Lab. This is Thomas, and welcome to another packed week at Starbase Texas and Cape Canaveral, Florida. As the Starship continues towards launch operations, iron workers have begun adding new tabs for mounting exterior cladding to the launch tower. Production on new ship likewise continues to move quickly. In the Friday twilight, the downcomer for Ship 26's methane tank was installed. On Saturday, Doug returned to Port Canaveral with fairing halves from NORL 44, the first Falcon Heavy launch in three years. Fabrication work is nearing completion on a new booster transport stand at Sanchez, with the vehicle alignment pins being put into place. Work crews began adding boom extensions to one of the grove cranes, indicating that high altitude lifts will be taking place soon. Later in the day, Bob returned to Port Canaveral with the fairing halves from Hotbird 13G launch. At the Starship launch site, the Raptor maintenance platform was lowered from under the orbital launch mount. The Raptor maintenance platform was lifted back into place under the mount an hour later. Late Sunday evening, Bob departed Port Canaveral to support Galaxy 31 and 32 launch, taking a wide path away from Hurricane Nicole. A full stack methane tank prior test was conducted on Monday, as crews continue to advance the test program toward an all engine static fire of Booster 7. The test battery included a ship quick disconnect attachment from Ship 24 while it was venting propellant gases. The test battery wrapped up early in the afternoon with Ship 24 and Booster 7 depressurizing together. In the evening, a novel gas venting event could be seen under Booster 7. SpaceX's fire suppression system was not in use. About 45 minutes later, the FireX suppression systems designed to prevent flammable gas buildup were tested on the orbital launch mount. Ship 25 conducted a cryogenic load test on suborbital Stand A through Monday afternoon. Stand A's puck shucker is designed to simulate the engine flight loads with hydraulic rams to verify the ship's structures. A bit of shuffling took place with SpaceX's Port Canaveral fleet. After unloading its fairings, Doug departed for parts unknown. The Crosby skipper returned to port with Just Read the Instructions and B-1067 from the Hotbird 13G mission soon after. Returning to Boca Chica's build site for Tuesday morning, the V2 Starlink optimized payload bay door was installed on Ship 27's fairing section. Ship 25, which has completed crowdproofing, was lifted off Pad A and placed on a transport stand ahead of its return to the build site. Operations to destack Ship 24 and have the next phase of qualification testing began with the detachment of the quick disconnect. The ship quick disconnect arm swung out next, clearing the way for the chopsticks to lower the ship. The vehicles were destacked an hour later. The next phase of the test program will involve separate static fires of the ship and booster, followed by a full stack wet dress rehearsal. Following Ship 24's D-Stack and the reopening of the launch site, Ship 25 made a return journey to the build site, where it will receive its engines and final outfitting. Once Ship 25 arrived, it was maneuvered into High Bay, parking inside at dusk. A new interstage test ring departed near midnight, headed for the Sanchez site. On Wednesday, Ship 24 was moved to Test Stand B, where it will perform another round of static fire testing. A semi-truck brought a shipment of Starlink satellites to the payload processing building in the afternoon, possibly destined for Ship 25. Against the setting sun, a new test tank aft section was rolled into Mega Bay for stacking. Meanwhile, Ship 24 was lifted onto Test Stand B for its static fire testing campaign. When completed, Ship 24 will be nearly ready for flight. That night, the newest test tank's forward section was staged near the entrance to Mega Bay. The test tank aft section was then lifted onto the welding turntable. With everything in place, the test tank was ready to be fully stacked in Mega Bay, which was carried out overnight into Thursday. Booster 7 testing preparations began at the launch site with raising of the chopsticks, which keeps them clear from the rocket exhaust and debris. 
The first system to be tested on Booster 7 was the four grid fins, which were sequentially actuated before returning to their resting positions. After several hours of cryogenic pipeline conditioning, and with the new fire suppression system firing away, Booster 7 conducted a multi-engine spin prime test that afternoon. Though it's not clear if the test achieved its desired goals, the fire suppression system proved its effectiveness at purging gases. A few hours later, a short additional test of the FireX system took place following Booster 7 spin prime. And there it is, another weekly update of Starbase Texas and Cape Canaveral, Florida, brought to you by Lab Padre. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again next week.